You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, 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 what is up, guys? Welcome to another incredible episode of Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I am your host, Denny. We have another special guest for you guys, someone you are very familiar with. Uh, but before we bring them on, I do want to say, you know, just get started. You know, I know it sounds simple to do, uh, but I, for one, know that it's, it's not as easy as it sounds some days. On some days, you know, I guess it's, it depends on how you're wired, and we're not all wired the same. Some of us are born hitting the ground running. Others, it takes some time because, you know, it has to simmer, cook, and <laughs> has to cook for a while, but... I'm one of those people who has to cook for a while, you know, just getting started sounds easy, but sometimes can be very complicated. But anyway, instead of worrying and complaining about how difficult it is, sometimes you just have to get started. Take one step, could be studying, Googling, whatever you need to Google, just getting the basic information. That is a step. You know, you don't have to waste your time and effort on excuses for not moving forward. Just go ahead and get started. There are a thousand perfectly good reasons to delay, to procrastinate, to avoid making the effort. Forget about them all and just get started. You know, as soon as you begin, you you put momentum on your side. And momentum is a powerful force to have working in your favor. As, as long as you're standing still, time and momentum works against you. I think there's a law, something like what's in motion stays in motion and, and what's at rest stays resting. The moment you get up and get started, you turn that momentum around and, and put it to work for you. The small effort it takes to get started will pay off many times over. And the more times that you do it, you become a pro at it, an expert, and almighty knowing this thing that you're doing right why just sit there when you could be getting whatever you desire to go why let time work against you when you could be using every moment to your advantage even though conditions may not be perfect now is the perfect moment to start and if you need just play this message over and over and over until you do make the first step because it's a mental thing first and then a heart thing and then when the mental and the heart connect oh my goodness you can't be stopped in an instant whenever you decide you can be firmly on the path to success and achievement just get started then keep going and before long you have done it yeah take take that and I mean, don't take that, but take two of those and call me in the morning. That is my word. Let's go. Access, a minority-run nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting survivors of domestic violence and sexual abuse. Our prevention division educates the public on healthy relationships, consent, and boundaries, while our recovery division provides support and resources after trauma. We offer workshops and coaching to individuals worldwide, helping them navigate complex issues and reclaim their power. We believe in the power of education and conversation. Our interdisciplinary approach challenges societal norms and empowers individuals to live authentically and purposefully. With the guidance of our accredited coaches, you can overcome obstacles, achieve your goals, and create the future you desire. Don't wait to take control of your life and your sexuality. Visit our website, SexSorg, to learn more about our services and how you can get involved. All right, all right. Yeah, it's 2024. You can't be saying things like, take that. (laughs) Nah, for real. Anyhow... 
Welcome to the show. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart to Radio. And I'm your host, Dini. Our interviews are designed to go beyond the music, news, books, art, acting, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and into the minds of these incredible human beings. You know, the ones who were out there giving it their all for me, for you, and for the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode with the incredibly talented Zachary Campos, representing the vibrant streets of San Jose, California. Oh, yeah. So, Zachary is not just a musician, as you guys know. He's also a dynamic MC, singer, and songwriter. And tonight, we'll talk about his latest track, Trial. Um, that captures the essence of indie rock infused with the spirit of resistance and eloquence. And today, Zachary joins us to share this inspiration behind trial. We might even dive into, like, lyrics, you know. I like doing that as well, you know. And maybe even talk about the Beatles or Kendrick Lamar and things like that, you know. Um somehow you gotta you gotta create songs that are both revolutionary and resonant so get ready for an inspiring session with a true musical visionary and with that let's welcome zachary to our show oh yo 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 what's going on yo what's good man it's good to it's good to be back absolutely man glad to have you back uh so man we're gonna we're gonna dive into trial this is a phenomenal record um, I, I love what you did with it. Uh, but before we do that, man, how have you been? Been on cloud nine, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> been on cloud nine. I've been living my dream life. So I, I have uh, zero complaints. All right. Love to hear it, man. I love to hear it. So what has you on cloud nine, just life in general? Yeah, I want to share actually why. Um, so basically this weekend, you know, I think I might have mentioned the last uh, interview that you and I had that May and like late April was going to be kind of like the the time that all this was going to like really start going. And so yeah, this weekend was kind of like the beginning of that journey. I started on Friday because I had a show at this. I've, I've performed there before. So like the show was pretty cool. Then Saturday I performed uh at this brewery and it was popping you know like those people were just like going crazy for my performance and it just went really well and i was really happy and as soon as i was done they invited me back like immediately they sent me more performance dates so and then yesterday i'm like crazy i drove like two hours and 30 minutes just to get to this place and you know they weren't uh they had they told me up front that you know i was going to be doing the performance for free but like you know i got a free meal and the place is pretty sick too so Nice. Uh, all of those performances went really well and me and my girlfriend is actually right here i'm actually holding her hand her name's uh monique i've mentioned her before uh she um her and i are staying at this extended stay out uh out here and it's just it's really nice so it's just like our little home our little rabbit luna it's like you know we're just we're living the dream just been watching movies we watched are we there yet which was awesome <laughs> so we've been watching we've been like watching 2000s like comedy like you know those like stupid comedy movies from 2000s yeah. and then we've been watching like psychological thrillers from like the 70s so it's been it's been quite a time yeah we've been having a really really beautiful time here together man sounds great what up monique glad you are <laughs> around said, what's up <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's here with me i got you in my headphones but she uh i played her one of our interviews and she was like she was super all for it so she she knows who you are for sure dope 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 man. yeah so uh the last episode i asked you about you know what is truly worth fighting for i have another mm-hmm. deep question for you uh that's the question that, of the so i didn't i didn't want to walk uh, at, ask you the same question but uh for sure for sure if you could know the absolute truth to one question what question would you ask what happened to me as a child <laughs> <laughs> like you ask me a real question i give you a real answer <laughs> like what, what do the do things mean? like that like do the things i don't want to go like too into it i want to get like too personal but mainly kind of like did what I think happened 
happened to me and who did it. You know what I mean? Like, right. Cause I just want to know the truth of that so I can understand better. But then I've always kind of wrestled with that. Cause I'm like, is that a question I even really want to know the answer to? Like what good would it do to know the answer? But at the same time, it's like, what if I could know the answer, you know? Yeah. I think uh, even an important question is, would it change you? I don't think so. I think I would remain the same man that I am, but it would just, I guess it would give me closure. But you know what I've learned in my life is that closure is kind of like not real. (laughs) Yeah. Closure doesn't exist. Closure exists in movies and TV shows and video games, but closure is not real. You know, the only closure we really get is when we take our last breath on this earth. That's really the last piece of closure we get as human beings, you know? Yeah, you know what, Zachary? I was agreeing with you until I remember uh, a few things. I What's think that? there is closure. Um, I used to have mm-hmm. beef with some of my close friends. You know, we were real close in the music industry, and we fell out, you know. Uh, Been there. Yeah, real close to, like, if we were... F- it's a good thing it happened over the internet because if we were face to face, we would probably, you know, swing on each other. Yeah, you but, guys like square up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, we're, we were supposed to be brothers, right? But time mm-hmm. happened, time happened, time and space. And for the life of you, man, or for the life of me, I mean, mm-hmm. I couldn't remember what it was that we were beefing about. And he too. Mm-hmm. And we were like, yo, what, what were, I don't know. I can't remember. So it was like, all right, we're back to being friends. It's like water under the bridge. We don't even remember what it was that we fell out about until like months later. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember, you know, you try to steal the team. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah I did do that. And But <laughs> we, are, we had already, you know, shaken hands and kumbaya and <laughs> it, it was closure. I understand. I think for myself personally, I have like a very bitter view when it comes to that kind of stuff because Mm. like I've been through very uh, similar experiences as you have. Um, But I think in my case, I had tried very hard to like, you know, kind of like be the person to initiate like the apology because that's one of like my kind of things I've been working on as a person is like over apologizing for things. And a lot of that I feel as though stems from like having OCD and like always feeling like everything's my fault or like having to apologize so like I think a lot of that bitterness kind of clouded my judgment for being able to forgive because I feel like forgiveness and closure are very one in the same so I think there's kind of like a middle area where it's like it does exist it's like the true closure is just to move on at the end of the day like you said in your instance with your friends like you guys were able to find closure through that instance because you were all able to mature and let it go, you know? And I think honestly, as like being a man, that's one of the like most kind of uh, manly things you can do, you know, is just really just move on and just let it be. And it's not always easy, but you know, you got to do it. It's important. Absolutely. All right, all right. Uh, man, so, wow. Um, what drew you to, uh, well, before that, um, what was it about Joseph K's character that resonated so deeply with you? Uh, I honestly thought he was one of the, like, coolest characters I've ever read in any, or, like, kind of experienced in any form of media, like, I just thought, like, because I I had no idea what the book was about. I, I, like, had an idea, because basically I bought these books a long time ago. I bought them, like, years ago, and they had just been sitting in my drawer at my mom's house, and I finally had went to go get them, because I just finished uh, the last book that I was reading. So then I was like, all right, I need a new book, but I don't want to go buy one, because I want to start saving money. Then I found the trial, and then I opened it, and with his character... I was just like very, very um, like fascinated by his resilience and his like unwillingness to back down because like it's just like a really, really uh, like a very like I don't know the word like it's a trait that like I just want to adapt more and more into my own life like these characters who are just super strong and like they just don't back down from injustice and they they always fight for what's right and they do what's right so i just really thought it was really poetic and 
I was immediately drawn to write a song about it because I was like, I wanted to start expanding my knowledge and start to like really showcase my ability as a storyteller. You know, kind of like the Fresh Prince. <laughs> I wanted to tell a story. Absolutely. And, and what drew you to Franz, I think it's Kafka's? Franz Kafka, yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, it was like a couple years ago. Uh, I remember, I believe it was a YouTube video that I had watched. And it was talking about one of his short stories, which was The Metamorphosis, which is a lot more popular. And that story is really good, too. And it's like a story of like this guy who one day he wakes up as a bug. And he... Um, it's about like his family and like how they treat him and you know it's like a allegory for depression and mental health and how like like familial trauma kind of like with being ignorant to mental health so like I just always find like his stories to be really really fascinating so I remember I bought these books um, the trial and I bought uh, his short stories and then the book I'm reading right now the castle so like his books um, I don't know just like this like kind of like this dreamlike quality to his writing that it makes it like very surreal but at the same time it kind of just accentuates the real life allegories which make it really poetic and draw me to the the storytelling which I really really like so yeah I feel like there's a lot to to take away from his stories and really definitely very existential I would say is a good word to describe his writing style is like really just makes you think a lot deeper about like philosophical themes in our society and makes you like analyze things in a, a deeper lens you know yeah yeah man i'm real interested in how you like mapped out the lyrical structure of this song you know um using narrative storytelling at that um so how did yeah man how did you do that yeah, so I think it's interesting you say that, um, and thank you, by the way, because, like, this is the first song, I believe, that I've written like this, that um, is, like, kind of, like, has this structure, which I'm really happy about, because it's, like, it's not a very long song, but I feel like it's a very, like, meaty song, you know, like, there's a lot to digest there, and I think, so I had um, written the lyrics before I finished reading the book, so like the section that the song is about it kind of like takes place like near nearer to the beginning and then like the last it kind of like goes throughout the entire book because there's obviously like a lot of things that happen in that story but i, I kind of saw this to be the main one like my favorite scene in the book is when he's in the courtroom and he's like telling them like it is and like you know what the song talks about and then at the end of the story you know he does they end up like it's like a year later and they end up taking him and dragging him out to the street and they like are pressed to him cheek to cheek and they stab him in the heart you know so it's like there's obviously a lot of parallels to the bible there and like the whole like cheek to cheek thing so, like judas uh he betrayed jesus with a kiss on the cheeks so, like i don't know it's just like i think the way i mapped it out was just kind of like i started at the beginning and i worked backwards if that makes sense like because yeah. the uh, I, I wanted to make because you know I did finish the book and I, um, I really really loved it but I just felt like I because I finished the book before I went to the studio like I just like dusted through it and it's like it's not an easy read either because it's like old English you know it's like the guy who wrote it Franz Kafka is from Germany so it was translated so it, it wasn't an easy read you know this book's really old and classic but at the same time I just like I'm really happy that I read it because when I went into the studio, it really helped me to like really get into the mind of that character and like really just kind of like understand like the the strife that he goes through and everything and like the injustice that is still very much alive in our world. And because I realized that a lot of the greatest artists of all time, they stand for something much greater than themselves. So that's definitely the path that I'd like to walk on and kind of like the the direction I'd like to push my music in in the future i wouldn't say like politically charged music or anything but i would say definitely existential for my music like i want to like challenge people and like i feel like with indie rock and specifically like you mentioned in the beginning like me and monique were literally just listening to pumped up kicks by foster the people which is like the song that mm -hmm. you know i like and the reason why i make the music i make that is like the song you know <laughs> like 
so that like somebody that I used to know like mm-hmm. all that music from like that era like fun you know like uh, some nights and we are young like that's the music of my childhood so like I feel like a lot of those artists you know like have a lot of like even like pumped up kicks as very like philosophical and like very deep lyrics when you really read into it but it's like that's why I feel like this genre can why I'm so like drawn to it is like it can transcend kind of like a lot of different styles and you can implement a lot when you're an indie rock musician so like yeah I just think the I'm I'm just really happy with the the work that I did on this track you know it's like I think it's a really really good song and I'm just like really pumped for people to hear it and hear what they think of it because it's just you know it's something that I think you could definitely tell the like inspiration behind it and a, a lot of my favorite music it's like it's very inspired and you can you can feel it you know yeah man as a great artist yourself um what what do you stand for thank you um i stand for living very positively like when i i think a lot of that as i mentioned to you comes from like performing at assisted living facilities and like because i think my true purpose in life is to bring like more love and positivity to this world and doing it in like a like as a pacifist and like doing my best to like get my own anger under control and be calm and because you know ever since me and monique like moved here to our little like temporary home you know it's been like i just felt very calm you know i feel very cool and collected so like I just think a lot of it is just like bringing that energy to the world and I think bringing a lot more like realness because I've been doing a really really great job of like limiting my time that I go on my phone you know like I don't really spend that much time on my phone anymore and like so I'm just doing my best to like really practice what I preach and like if I say like I want to be a positive and loving person and like I want the world to follow that and like Specifically, like, when I go out to my performances, like, this weekend, like, I feel like a prophet, you know, because, like, I'm coming there and, like, yeah, I'm, my job is to entertain first and foremost, but at the same time, it's, like, I want to bring that, like, positive energy to these people's lives and, like, really, like, help them because, like, if they're dealing with anything or if they're going through any tough times, like, I want them to just know that everything's going to be all right, you know, because, like, I've been through those dark times and everything was all right for me and like now i'm living like the life that i've always dreamed of like specifically like some like really traumatic stuff that i went through and went through not too long ago like when i was going through that time in my life i was like i'm never gonna get out of this like this is gonna be my life forever and i just felt miserable i felt depressed and you know this wasn't like that long ago you know so like it was like a couple years ago so now like that i'm here in this instance like with Monique and our rabbit Luna and our baby on the way and everything it's just like I just always take so many moments to appreciate the life that I'm living and just really really appreciate it you know and that's why I'm always like in a good mood or why I'm all, like I feel like the kind of like the way I could see it is like the quality of the music speaks for itself because I feel like my music is like getting next level and I think that's really a reflection of the way that I'm living my life if that makes sense absolutely man absolutely all right guys we are about to dive into trial and then we'll be right back with more Zachary Campos stay tuned Joseph K. He was arrested on his 30th birthday. This is where the story now begins, you see. He was put on trial, but he should have been free. Joseph was the type of man who would speak his mind. He was trying not to lose his mind right at the time. Joseph was a worker of the bank, his status high. They told him that he did a crime without an alibi. So he went inside, inside a courtroom all day long. He spoke his words so clearly and he said them very strong. Joseph went and told them all what they needed to hear. He stood inside the courtroom and he spoke with zero fear. He said to them what needed to be said there at his trial. Joseph's monologue went on for something 
quite a while Joseph stood there bravely as he spoke right to the crowd He said his truth so clearly, all without a shred of doubt Joseph stood there tearing the entire court apart And after all was said and done, they stabbed him in the heart There was once a man by the name of Joseph K He was arrested on his 30th birthday Are you tired of chasing after success and not achieving your goals? Success is possible. You just need the right help, the right guidance, and the right mentors. And that's what you will find on the podcast, Stop Chasing and Start Listening, hosted by real estate investor and business owner, Jason Chrisman. Jason has a lineup of incredible guests who cover the world of real estate investing, entrepreneurship, and business strategies. You'll learn from the best on how to elevate your game. Guests include Richard Taylor. He's a 22-year-old powerhouse who's raking in $60,000 a month. That's right. He'll share his secrets to success and teach you how to unlock your potential. Leslie joins the program. Once she was a pharmacist. Now she's a digital marketing millionaire. You'll learn how she transformed her career and built her empire from the ground up. And don't miss out on the incredible story of a firefighter turned self-made landlord. With 53 properties under his belt, he's living proof that dreams do come true with hard work and determination. Each episode of Stop Chasing and Start Listening is filled with valuable insights, practical tips, and inspiring stories that will help you reach your goals. Add Stop Chasing and Start Listening to your podcast playlist right now on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and your favorite podcast platform. Stop Chasing and Start Listening with host Jason Chrisman. Start listening right now and take that first step to living the life that you and your family deserve. All right, all right. That was Zachary Campos with this song, Trial. With that, let's go ahead and bring him back. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back, my friend. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just, I was very, uh, I was vibing. I was like, okay. that's how you know a song is good. When you're just listening, you're like, damn, this <laughs> song's pretty good. And you're like, who is this? Like, oh, wait, that's me. <sighs> Man, so how does that feel? Like, you know, you've recorded a song and then you get the master back and it's polished. How does that make you feel when you listen to yourself for the first time? It's the best feeling ever. <laughs> <laughs> like the, like being in the studio, hearing it. And like when I think like when I get the album artwork back, I'm like, Oh yeah. I'm like, it's on, you know? Cause like, especially with the album artwork, like, especially for this song, cause I'm really, really happy with what, you know, the artist, um, Santiago Diaz, what he did with it. I just, cause I, I gave him uh, like this famous painter, Caravaggio, who's like a Renaissance painter that I learned about in my English 1B class at my community college, West Valley. I had um, given him that like to, or inspiration and then just like the the style that he drew me in like totally fits for the song and like the courtroom with the american flag in the background it just like totally fits for the vibe of the song and what the song's about so like i was just so happy with him and then the the guy who did the animation for the spotify canvas artwork is like just everybody and it's like who's worked on the song and uh, the man, one of my, has like become one of my music mentors, uh, Tim J. Abbott. He, he did the guitar, he did all the production, you know, did all the guitar, the bass line, the drums and everything. And then I like wrote the song and he just nailed it. And um, the guy, Paul Garcia, is making the music video right now and made the video for my last song, Precision, which came out last week, which he absolutely nailed. And I'm excited to see what he's going to do so he's working on the video right now it should be done thursday right before release day which is uh uh on friday so yeah it's just like i got my own little team going you know like yeah. of course i got monique <laughs> so she's my muse and then luna she's you know our little rabbit she's been uh offering me a ton of inspiration so we, i got my i got my small little little squad here you know it's pretty cool pretty cool pretty cool indeed well man where can our listeners connect with you online? Yeah, so uh, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, I got my own website now. It's actually campos.com. You can listen to all my music for free because I don't really care about making money from my music. I'm just, you know, 
I just want people to listen to it. I'm uh, I'm getting paid as an entertainer, you know. So I'm chilling. <laughs> I just I want people to just hear my music. And if I could get paid, that'd be nice. But I got all my songs for free. If you know you don't got Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, also YouTube Music. Uh, music video will be out this Friday too. Um, as I mentioned, Paul Garcia is an amazing video production man. And yeah, just anywhere you can you can listen to it, it'll it'll be there. Absolutely, man. Sticking it to the man. You don't need the machine. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. They, so yeah, I've actually uh, run into quite an interesting little um, uh, thing, I guess, going on with streaming. So apparently, um, so like the way that um, like I go about getting my streams is like I work with like people who make playlists and, you know, like you pay to get on their playlist and then like they'll get you streams and i mainly do that like for um branding reasons so that way like if somebody looks up the song on google like if you know if somebody's like like the songs will come up and then it um, more so legitimizes my brand but apparently the distributor that i'm working with doesn't uh they don't like when people do that and i'm just like very confused because i'm like how are you supposed to get your name out there if you can't promote your music and they're basically like expecting you to go out and sit out in the street with a hat and like play the <laughs> guitar and like <laughs> like have people throw pennies in there i'm not hating on people who make their living that way i'm just saying like that's you know it's it's kind of ridiculous in my opinion so it's like it's interesting to me that uh i just feel like they're trying to crack down on it but in in turn i feel like that actually hurts artists because i've Literally in like my entire time of putting music out on, on Spotify since I was like 23, I probably made like, what, like a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like, and that's nothing. You know what I mean? Like, that's like one performance for me as a as an entertainer. So I could care less about getting paid for my music. Like, if they wanted to, well, because that's what they'll do. They'll strike your music. They'll strike your Spotify. They'll give you a strike, and then they'll just take the song down. I'm like, or, but first they'll like take the royalties. I'm like, take the royalties. I'm like, I don't care. Like, you guys aren't paying me anyway, <laughs> you know? Right. I'm like, so, yeah, to me, it's like, it just like, it's become kind of a frustrating issue because I'm just like, number one, I need to promote myself. And number two, like, I'm just trying to get my music heard. You know, like, I don't care about getting paid off of this. Like, I'm just trying to, I want people to listen to it. That's really all it is to me at the end of the day. So, That's little true. music insight for you. Yeah, man, you got to stand up for yours, you know, and, and art and the value of art has always been a tricky subject, you know, Definitely. so I don't, I don't know, man, anyhow, man, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us such a deep dive into the creative process behind trial and the powerful messages in the song as well. Your ability to weave complex narratives and musical styles into compelling tracks is truly inspiring, my friend. And to our listeners, be sure to check out Zachary Campos' music, including his latest work, Trial, available on all major platforms and over at ZacharyCampos.com. Follow him to stay updated on his musical journey and upcoming releases. And Zachary, man, we wish you the best in your future endeavors and can't wait to hear more of your innovative music man so thank you guys for tuning in everyone keep exploring keep creating and keep pushing the boundaries thank you so much hey what's up long time i forgot to mention that oh by the way this is dini you know vigilantes radio live uh vp of operations for busy bone from bone thugs and harmony blah 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 anyhow only one theory dropped a new single it is called la jefecita it's on spotify as a matter of fact it's on all major platforms you should check it out right now oh and by the way there's also a visual on youtube it's hot check it out today only one theory dot com check that out too peace thank you 
my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio Live. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, Spotify, CastBox, iHeart Radio, iTunes, YouTube, the app Podcast Addict, or over at our website which again is onlyonemediagroup.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you like to request some music or send something for me to play email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com that is v as in victor and here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone and actually scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right that's the bottom line this is my show so deal with it <laughs> just kidding on behalf of myself denny i appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us spread the word because sharing is caring we stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show be sure to connect with me on facebook twitter instagram tumblr snapchat tiktok at all social media sites as well as spreaker youtube we always follow back okay well just remember to put yourself into everything that you do and never stop investing in yourself peace love grilled cheese and talk with you later You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive. What's up guys, it's Dini, and I want to welcome you on a journey of the heart and of the mind. These Fucking Feelings Podcast is a beacon in the world of mental health advocacy, and it invites you to join a conversation that's changing lives. We are here to share, listen, and grow together. Led by the passionate Michael Bravery, alongside the insightful Rebecca and Crystal, This award-winning podcast dives deep into the human experience, from navigating relationships to coping with loss. No topic is off limits. It's about real stories and real emotions. These fucking feelings, it's more than just a show. It's a community, a place where vulnerable isn't just accepted, it's celebrated. You can find it across major platforms, including YouTube and Facebook Watch. This podcast is a touchstone for anyone seeking understanding and support. These Fucking Feelings Podcast, where every emotion is valid and every story matters. Tune in and transform the way you see mental health.